So CIRA Week is really the um, kind of the, the world premier event focused on an energy, um, most notably oil and gas. But it, it, it brings together in, in one forum for a five-day period some of the best and the brightest when it comes to, to energy and, uh, and energy opportunities, energy innovation. So to be part of this very elite group uh, for uh, the fifth year in a row now um, was a great honor. Um, I'm always interested in, in knowing how the United States and more specifically Alaska is viewed uh, on the global stage. And I will tell you this year there was a lot of room for celebration about the role of the United States in terms of its energy dominance and how we are using that uh, not only to the betterment of our national economy and, and boosting jobs, um, but also to, to help assist our friends and our allies around the globe. It was not too many years ago that we were talking about building import terminals for LNG. Now we can't move fast enough to to turn that around to have export facilities for, for this renaissance that we have seen uh, with natural gas and, and our opportunity for, for LNG and, and export. Um, it, was, it was four years ago at CIRA that I first laid down this, this notion, this concept that we needed to uh, withdraw the 40-year-old outdated policy that uh, prohibited export of our oil to other countries outside of the small exception that Alaska had. We worked that uh, through the process and we were able to put that into law a few years back. I think it was four years ago now. And, uh, and, and now the headlines, uh, what everyone was sharing at Sarah Week was the recognition that by the end of this year, the United States will be producing more oil than Saudi Arabia. We will be the world leader when it comes to oil and natural gas um, in, our, in our production and, and with our export here soon. Um, this is transformative, and this has come about because of some of the policy changes that, that we have helped to facilitate. I'm, I'm particularly proud of my role in, in lifting that oil export ban and, and allowing us to, to really move out with, with our production. From Alaska's perspective, we are, we're, we're on the map. Um, we are now talking about our prospects uh, for oil exploration and production within the 1002 area, something that has been off the table for, for decades. And so while we are still uh, a ways away from the lease sale, being able to talk about that as, as an opportunity and where we are in that process was, was very important. I had multiple meetings with uh, with those in the industry about these prospects, encouraging a level of interest, was able to, to speak and remind um, those who have not been particularly following the exploration and production activities within the NPRA. What we're seeing there in terms of the, 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 the volumes that are projected to come online in, in these next few years to help fill up that Trans-Alaska pipeline, uh, it is very good news. It is a strong story coming out of Alaska. It's an extraordinary story coming out uh, of the United States when it comes to, to our energy dominance. And it was, it was a really um, uh, uplifting uh, time to be at, at CIRA. Well, it's, it's interesting because CIRA is, is it's typically focused on, on oil and gas, but uh, when we're talking about energy and, and, and the contributions of energy globally, uh, we all know that it is more than oil and gas. It is, it is renewables. It is the technologies that are allowing us to do more when it comes to clean energy sources. Uh, for instance, uh, carbon, uh, uh, carbon capture, uh, utilization, and storage. Uh, it is nuclear and, and the great prospects for advanced nuclear. And so 
uh, there are many of the, the oil and gas uh, producers, the, the, the CEOs, um, the, the government officials that are, 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 are part of those organizations. But what was particularly noteworthy, and, 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 and this is what I think set this year apart, was in the mix with, with oil ministers from around the world and, and CEOs of, of these major corporations, um, was the tech industry represented at a scale and a level that I have never seen. I had an executive sit down uh, with about 20 different individuals. It was a, it was a real mixed, uh, mixed group, but in that group, there were probably five that were directly affiliated with an oil and gas uh, company. The others were all affiliated with high-tech, high-tech groups, whether it was Microsoft, Google, smaller um, uh, tech operations, uh, Siemens. I mean, when you think about, when you think about the role that, uh, that you're seeing within the energy space now and the level of innovation that is going on, that innovation is coming about because we are integrating the technology into, into the mix. Uh, and, and whether it is how we are utilizing extended reach drilling and, and, and our ability to do that, or the extraordinary advances that we now have in, in how we collect the, the, the seismic data. It is, it is it, it's almost beyond imagination. And that's where you have such an extraordinary story to tell young people. If you're looking for uh, an opportunity to be engaged in, in fast-moving technology, go to the energy sector. Because every day you're seeing, you're seeing innovation being pushed out just a little bit more, a little bit faster. So what we need to then do is we need to, on the policy side, keep up with the pace of the changes in technology. Because that's where the drag is right now. And this is why going back to the role that I have as the chairman of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, we need to make sure that we have updated our energy policies. We haven't done this in 11 years now, making sure that our own policies aren't the drag on innovation. We saw what was unleashed when we lifted that 40-year-old that ban on export that allowed for the increased production, that allowed for a level of innovation that was un, is unprecedented in this field. So let's look at those other areas where outdated policies have been holding us back and keeping us from being competitive on a world scale, keeping us from being the leaders when it comes to, to clean, diverse, affordable, secure supplies of energy. Totally geeking out. You're with all of these brilliant people who are so, uh, so knowledgeable in their fields, who are so, um, uh, so inspirational in terms of, of their purpose and their mission. I had uh, an extraordinary opportunity to have dinner with uh, Daniel Jurgen who is the, the head of, of, of IHS Market, uh, head of CIRA. Um, he has been putting this conference on for 38 years now. Uh, his wife is, is Angela Stent. I uh, had an opportunity to meet with her, a Georgetown professor who kicked off the, uh, the, 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 the week with a, with a, uh, a panel discussion on the geopolitics politics of, of, of oil and gas and energy, and, and she spoke to the role uh, that Russia plays in all this. So an extraordinary uh, female leader in, in her own right. And so to have a private conversation, have a sit-down dinner uh, with, 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 with people like, like Mr. Jurgen, uh, his wife, uh, to, to, to visit with Dr. Birol, the head of the, the International Energy uh, Association, who had come to our uh, committee just two weeks prior to testify, to sit down with Secretary Perry on one side and former Secretary Moniz um, 
both uh, 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 former secretary, former secretary of, of energy, and now current secretary of energy, and to, to go back and forth about what we're going to do uh, to deal with uh, with our, our our nuclear waste issues. These are the uh, the the stimulating and inspiring and and the conversations that just make you want to work harder every day.